So let's talk about culture. Um, on the right-hand side are, are some of the kind of factors and conditions uh, that we're looking at. I'll give you a second to kind of look through that. And now I'm going to, I got pages of notes. So this is where the reading really kicks in. I feel like there's about 50 to 75 kind of real true startups, one or more founders working full time and actively working their idea and company. Maybe that gets to 100 and maybe there's another 25 kind of still working in their basements who aren't kind of, um, kind of part of the ecosystem yet. And maybe I'm off by another 20%, but let's call it kind of 75 to 100. Not referring to contractors, freelancers, or kind of non, or you know, kind of main street mom and pop businesses. In terms of network size, they're almost all connected primarily through AO and are generally aware of all the activities in the region. That's great news. Uh, in terms of network, I think there's kind of a minimum number of natural, not organized mentors. I think it's the natural DNA of an entrepreneur to give back and want to help others. And there's some of that happening kind of outside of AO or outside of kind of organized, um, but it's kind of at a minimum. And I always think of things, I'm gonna talk about network a lot, so I'm gonna think about, think about physically nodes and links and how people are connected. Um, being that you guys are a little bit of a geographic island as proven today with my flight uh, arrangements, um, it's incumbent on everyone to help grow and diversify this thing I call the startup network. The overall connectedness has room for improvement. It is a task never completed. I observe some silos starting to develop among various niche groups. This is a natural phenomena that we see as communities start to grow is pieces start to splinter as people kind of double down on the things that they're most interested in or can do. Unfortunately, it becomes imperative that we recognize that and make sure those things don't drift too far apart. Because in the, in the disconnectedness of various clusters comes, as we all know, in the void of communication information, we frequently put bad shit in there, right? We start to assume different thoughts. And I'll give you a few examples. I'm talking about groups like, you know, like the old guard here. Um, you know, maybe the Club Peng some of the Club Penguin guys. Colab and AO. Um, and a group of relatively new founders who may not be aware of even some of the work that's been done five to seven years ago. Um, as an example, it didn't appear to me that was, there was kind of a regular kind of um, communication or connection between the groups over at CoLab who do a whole lot of good shit and AO. And I know that we pimp each other's calendar stuff out, but that's like the minimum. I'm talking about sitting down and figuring out, all right, what's next? How do we... How do we kind of make sure our groups are connected to each other seamlessly and frictionlessly? Um, some of these, you know, each one of those two groups, as just an example, you know, put on events, but it seems like different groups only attend certain ones of those. So there's, there's kind of a clustering starting to form. Another example I observed is that there's um, kind of super nodes. These are people that are extremely well connected. Um, but that there seems to be a little bit of hesitation in those super nodes or super uh, connectors to kind of expose their network to others. Anytime you build friction into the network is you slow things down. What I'll tell you is that as an entrepreneur, my job is to figure out how to gather all the resources necessary when I need them to go execute my plan. And anytime there's friction in between of that, I put at risk my company. Great communities support entrepreneurs by connecting them to the things they need when they need them. Anytime there's friction in that, we slow that and we put entrepreneurs at risk. As a community, what do we want? We want more entrepreneurs to be successful quicker, right? So that success uh, breeds success. If you, are in, if you are using or encapsulating a give first mentality, then you should expose your network to someone when they need it. Now, just because I know the mayor, who just walked in, by the way, um, doesn't mean that I'm going to make introductions to every one of you to the mayor, because sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. But if it makes sense, or if I say, you know what, you two should know each other, then make the introduction and leave it up to them to figure out how to make that work and whether that's appropriate. 
Anytime you put judgment and curation into that, you're, you're creating friction. And anybody who's been out to the valley knows, man, there's no friction, right? You can get to anything you want very, very quickly. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about, network friction. In terms of events, I believe AO produced about 140 events last year. Think about that for a second. So here's the thing, and I've shared this with them. We don't need more events. We probably need some different events. We probably need to up the quality events. That tactic, in terms of putting as many ways as possible for people to connect, was a really good kind of one to three activity. But now we need to get a little bit smarter and scale this. If you're sitting here and you have a need or you see a, a, a gap or a void and you want to fill it, stand up, share the thought, and figure out who else has this problem. That new leadership kind of thing is how this thing's going to scale. And lastly, I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about sto storytelling. Every grown community needs to share their wins, their challenges, the stories of both. Things like uh, Unplugged, where you put an entrepreneur up and they talk about their experience is a great way. And have them talking about how shitty the journey is, how sometimes you can't imagine doing it tomorrow, and then three days later, you've had the biggest win of your life. Right? Sharing those things is, is really positive. In mature communities, entrepreneur, influencer, leaders do this through speaking, blogging, writing books, doing social media. I don't see much of that happening here. If it's not on AO's blog, no one's telling the story, no one's telling your own thing. Okay? Entrepreneurs love other entrepreneurs. They want to hear from them, they want to hear their journey, they want to connect with them, they want to follow them. We all follow certain people in social media on the business side, not necessarily on the, on the you know, friend side. Right? We follow those people because there's something they have that we want to get from them. We want to be in their orbit. The next phase of this region is we need to have some of these influencer leader entrepreneurs kind of starting to tell the story. Not just their own story, but the story of the region. That will only encourage more entrepreneurship. There's some stuff that's happened. There's the Slack channel, which seems to be up and down. There was a Facebook group at times. Like, good starts, okay, let's kind of maybe take a step back. Well, I'll hold the recommendations in a second. Storytelling is as old as Jeff Keen. <laughs> it's been around a long, long time. It works. It works. Even writing that, I started laughing. <laughs> All right, so recommendations. Oh, something printed out of whack here. Give me a second here. Ah, we double printed something. I don't have my notes here, so we're going to do it on the fly. It's all right. I mean, I wrote it, so I should be able to know it. All right. So, here's the other funny thing other than the little stab at Jeff. Um, so, at least it was funny when I wrote it. So, uh, I know we're Canadian. See, I already made myself Canadian. <laughs> and what that means is kind of we have this like humble kind of like we don't crow, right? We don't, we're not big. We don't go out. But I got to tell you guys, as part of storytelling, you can crow in a humble nature. Right? And there's this thing about success breeds success and wins breed wins. Every single one of you is traveling, Vancouver, Toronto, Seattle, even in, you know, Patinkton or Vernon or at the university. I'm not telling you you have to spin this, but I see this like, well, we're just Kelowna. I'm telling you, I have told, I think I've told your story more than you guys have told your story around the country this year. My first time I was here was November, December of 2015. I've consistently used this phrase. 
this place punches way above its playing weight. Right? But no one here talks about that. And not that it gets bitchy, but it just gets kind of like, eh. But I gotta tell you, like, success breeds success. Tell the frickin' story. Tell these two guys, or, you know, and they just happen to be up front, right? So I'm picking on them, but like, you know, and you don't have to be like, oh my God, it's the most amazing thing in the world that Josh raised money. But it's like, hey, we got another company that raised some money, you know, that got exposure down to North America. The double sided version. The double sided version. See if I missed anything. So, you know, tell the darn story. Be proud of it, right? Everyone, every single person you're talking to is a potential lead in this. Yeah, see if I can do two things at the same time. I must have screwed some up. So, um, I'd love to see a lot more storytelling. Uh, it can be kind of organized and platform, right? There's, you know, it could, do, it could be through AO. I'd like to see stuff. Uh, we'll get to the second recommendation. Not everything has to be through AO. Someone, you know, wants to redo this Facebook group or get everyone involved in it, and if that's the right vehicle to start telling stories and sharing what's happening. Like, I think some of you be amazed at all the good things that are happening, but you're just not aware because we're all heads down. We need a way to kind of organize that, and I'd love someone in this room or someone not in this room to stand up and say, you know what? When I decide I'm gonna, what I'm going to do with my 5% of my give back time, my two to three hours a week that I'm going to give back to the community, what is, the, what is that one thing? Maybe this is it. Maybe I'll be the one that helps curate lots of stories. I got tons of ideas, things that I've done in my community, things I've done through Techstars, like uh, Startup Digest as a platform. But you know what? We need more people, you know, leadership stepping up to do that. I don't want it to hide kind of the, you know, the uh, not so positive stories, let's recognize them, let's share those, you know, journeys that are difficult, frustrations in fundraising, yeah, you can share those, but let's make sure we're always telling the good part of the story too, right? I firmly believe with every fiber of my soul that great entrepreneurship is a team sport, not a solo sport. As part of that, you gotta ask. If you don't ask for help, if you don't ask, the network to find things that you can do to gather those resources faster, then shame on you. So there's two parts of that. There's the ask and there's the give, right? So I talked about everyone saying, I'm going to give first, and we'll go through a few of those kind of tips and tricks. For instance, I probably spend a half an hour every day introducing people. Just because I met two people, I'm like, yeah, I should introduce those two people. They should know each other. They're in a certain phase that this is the next thing they're going to need. I should put them together. Let me ask you this question. When someone asks you to, you know, you have a coffee with someone and someone asks you to introduce them, do you ask that person for permission? Because that's network friction. Or do you just say, I do it? I want you all just to do it. If there's one thing you can take away today, by the way, this doesn't cost any money. We don't need any money from the city or from AO or the state to do this. If the network works great, you'll just make that introduction. And it's up to those two people what to do with it. I just thought you two people should meet. Every time someone sends me an email and says, hey, do you mind if I introduce you to this person? I said, listen, I trust your judgment. You want to introduce, introduce them, but don't ever ask me that again. I'm leaving that totally up to you. And by the way, no filter. Introduce as many people as you want, as you think are appropriate. I'll deal with the influx. That's an example of building a really great network. Imagine all the nodes that start getting added to that as you start to do that. Imagine all the potential in that network when you can, within minutes, get two hops away and get access to somebody or something that you need to solve a problem today. The last five years has been about a lot of activity taking place and AOO coordinating that for mentorship for access, for the network. But the next five years can't be just that leadership team. It has to be individuals. The cool thing about community is you don't apply for the job, maybe a little bit of AO, but you don't really apply for the job. There's a role for anybody to play, right? Each one of you in the job you do can be a leader if there's something that you are passionate about that you want to get organized. 
So stand up and say, and work the network and say, I think this thing would be interesting. Who's in? And go make that happen. Make that your thing. We need lots of leaders, not just a handful. You got it? I love what's happened in AO. And I'm going to share some things that I've shared with them already, which is that it's time for them to kind of scale, in my opinion, one man's opinion, our opinion, um, start scaling. One of the things I heard through, uh, from multiple, multiple um, people is that where do entrepreneurs? Oh, they have to go to AO. Well, guess what? That's just one door into the entrepreneurial room. As a tech, uh, technically more technical white guy, there's a door that makes sense for me. And that's the typical door that most entrepreneurs work, work or walk through. But for this community to grow and add more entrepreneurs, as a 25-year-old woman who's not technical, I may not like the door that works for me. So it's up, and it shouldn't be one organization's responsibility to create all the doors and windows into the room. So if you're a 25-year-old woman who codes, I want to know about your geek squad that you're putting together or your woman's tech meetup. And what I want to do is I want that person who wants to organize that reach out to AO or reach out to the people in this room and go, who's in and who should be in? And Corey introduces his, you know, one of the people that works in his group and says, you know what, she would love to be part of that group. And then he's out. And, a, and Andrew Aragua may say, you know what, this is a great idea. How about we give you 250 bucks for your first dinner and you figure out how to organize it. And by the way, I'll pimp out our email list to see who else is. But you run it. It's yours. That enabling support role is where I think I'd like to see AO start to migrate to. Because what's happened is they've done such a fantastic job of executing 140 frickin' events a year that many of you have started to overly rely on them and that this is the only door or window into the community. And we're all smart enough to know that regardless of talent or intention, that has a limit of what can happen in the community. Kind of a victim of their own success. If I can borrow a sports metaphor, I lived in Chicago for 10 years during the Michael Jordan years. Now, I'm not a big basketball fan, but I'm a sports fan. And I like sometimes the idea of what, how sports can be a metaphor for a lot of things. And what people who are in the know will talk about is when the Chicago Bulls got great is when Michael Jordan figured out how to support the rest of his teammates, how to put them in a position of success, and how he could take a lesser role and distribute the power among five, as opposed to just only relying on his talent to win games. Because sometimes you can only do so much. That's kind of where I think AO is today is say like, all right, I want, to, I want you to figure out how to be a fantastic asset to the community, but to start enabling the next set of leaders. I talked about storytelling. Who's going to step up? I like to give examples from my own life. Uh, not because I think well of myself, I just, I've learned from others. When I was sitting in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and we started building our accelerator and things started working, we we're about two years in, we went and did analysis of where all the applications were coming, where the people were coming, our entrepreneurs were coming from, and where the best ones that we selected and invested in. And it turns out that most of them came from hearing either my partner and I speak somewhere or they've read my blog, or I'd started writing for Inc. Magazine. So we weren't stupid. We said, well, we better do more of that, right? Because the more of that means we can open up the top of the funnel. Storytelling is a key component, right? Not just that content, i.e. more positive spins and let's talk about you know, some of the good things that are happening, but just people telling what's happening. 
People were amazed at all the activities that were going around in our area. They didn't know it, right? And that momentum, that positive momentum, everyone wants to be part of, right? And others start to say, well, maybe I can do it. Hell, if she can do it, I can do that too. I know her, right? So lots of ways to help. I'm personally um, kind of really into this. So if anybody has some ideas or we want to look at existing platforms or new platforms, I'm happy to go deep onto that.